the Joe Rogan experience. And it, it worries me a great deal. We've, we've changed we've changed a few definitions, like what it means to be a victim. I think we've changed that definition overwhelmingly. And we've changed the definition of justice also and, and, and injustice and what an injustice actually is. We've forgotten how to we've forgotten how to distinguish between discrimination and disparities. Like just because you don't have the same thing, does that effectively mean there was a, some injustice that occurred there? We're not asking those analytical questions, yes. and and I, and I think that's a real problem. And it's it's made debate very difficult. It's it's made debate with my colleagues in the Democratic Party very difficult because every disparity is assumed to be originating from some kind of injustice. You know, every time somebody is wealthier than somebody else, the assumption nowadays is that well, it's ill-begotten money, and that there's some kind of injustice that occurred. You know, when we were when we were voting on this giant stimulus package, not really a stimulus package, more of a rescue package. Remember how this happened? There was, you know, we were negotiating through this thing. It was actually looking pretty good. Nancy Pelosi comes in, says, hell no, we're blowing up the whole thing and uh, we're going to protect workers and damn, you know, not these damn corporations. OK, so, you know, you fast forward a few days, you ended up passing basically the same bill anyway. Um, that's a long story. I'd be happy to go into the details of that politically if you'd like me to. But the point is this. There was this outrage from the populist right and the populist left against anything that had the name corporation attached to it. And we've forgotten how to ask ourselves, like, why is that? Did they do something evil? What, what, what exactly is evil about these entities? You know, they, they employ lots of people. They create lots of wealth. And in this particular case, they're not being bailed out. They didn't do anything wrong. But we're really mad at them for some reason. We really hate them. Because there's this sort of cultural movement towards, towards feeling that anytime something is successful, like our reaction should be to punish it. And I, that, that cultural movement worries me a great deal. It worries me a great deal. It's, I think that's what leads to these sort of topics of socialism. Well, I think that that is one of the bad aspects of the ideals of socialism is this inclination to think that when there is an inequality, that then inequality is because of either corrupt, corruption or greed. There's also inequality of effort. People do not put in the same effort. And when you put in more effort, you're more focused, you're more disciplined, you do more work, you should be rewarded. And there's people that don't like that idea. And they don't like that idea because they're fucking lazy and they're weak. And that's a fact. And there's people in this world that are weak. And there's, it's, it's an unpopular thing to say. Because we want to say that, no, they're, they're economically disenfranchised. and they're, they're, Some people are. Yes, some people are. And there's also some people that work like a motherfucker. And those people get by. Yeah. And they get ahead. And those people should be rewarded for their effort. One of the problems that I have with people that espouse socialist ideals is that they don't want this competition aspect of our culture and our society to exist, where you put in more work, you get more reward. That's my whole life. That is my whole life. I mean, the, the, every, everything that I've ever done, I've realized, oh, all you have to do is work harder than everybody else. All you have to do is put in more time. All you have to do is be more obsessed, more focused, and you can get by. You can get ahead. Well, the people that don't like that are the people that don't like competition. They they don't understand it. It makes you feel bad when you lose. Everyone should get a trophy. Everyone should get a participation trophy. That is a giant problem with our culture. And this inequality, yeah, there is income inequality. Some of it is corruption. Some of it is bad. Some of it is inequality of effort. And that needs to be addressed as well. And it's not, you can't have this blanket thing that all the people that run corporations are greedy and all the money that they have acquired is because of ill-gotten gains. It's just not true. It's not true. And it's, it's anti-American, frankly. Yeah, I, I list a few um, tenets of a culture that make it a sustainable, successful culture. The first one is personal responsibility. I went into detail on that. The second one is mental toughness, which I wrote a whole book about. So, and it's important for the, you, you, you said it exactly how I describe it when I give speeches on this, which is we need mental toughness because otherwise, how do we survive in a free society where we have to compete? Because the only alternative to a bunch of mentally weak people is that we do live in a society where competition is not necessary because the government will just give you everything. 
but I don't want to live in that society. And frankly, that society can't function very well because nobody would actually do anything. And you have to be mentally tough to deal with that. And, and I think the American spirit and the Ameri- our, our history as a culture is a really, really tough bunch of people. And I just want to remind people of that. And I want to remind people that it's something to aspire to. Like, this is a good thing. Like, it's cool to be tougher. It's not cool to be a victim. Right. Right. But we have so many, like, postmodernists who actually, again, it's going back to this victimhood culture. They want you to be that victim. And then they'll celebrate you for it. Yes. When people tell their victimhood stories, they're cheered. But it's like, wait a second, where's the, where's the part where you overcame it? I thought that was the story we're supposed to cheer. Well, they also you know? connect, they also connect competition with cruelty. And I, I think that's yeah. that's foolish as well. I mean, yeah, it feels bad to lose, but that's just because it feels great to win. There's it's a there's, it's a peak in a valley thing, and you have to understand that. And look, every competition that I've ever had, any anything that where I've ever competed and lost, has fueled me beyond measure. It is what gets you by. It's what makes you better. There, I mean, one of the reasons why I understand this is because of martial arts. In martial arts, you have to train with the best people you can, and it's it fucking sucks. You get your ass kicked. It's part of the, but that's what makes you better. You need those people. You love those people. They become your brothers. It's very, very, very important. The bonds that are formed in jujitsu gyms and kickboxing gyms and martial arts gyms with the people that you train, the men and women that you train with, the, the, there's is an intensity to those bonds that's almost indescribable to anybody that hasn't experienced it. I mean, I'm sure it's not as as tight as people that have gone through combat together but there's something there, there's something in those people they they fuel you they help you and they help you by trying to kick your ass they help you by trying to be better than you they help you by trying to be the man they they want to be the best they can be and you think about those motherfuckers when you go to the gym you go god damn it mike is here shit and you, you get fired up for that person that you know is going to kick your ass. And they provide you with fuel. People that are better than you provide you with fuel. Competition provides you with fuel. It doesn't mean you have to be mean. It doesn't mean it's cruel. It doesn't mean it's insensitive. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that. It just means that competition is good. Competition is good for you. It's good. It shows you your better abilities. It shows you that, that you, you can aspire to greatness. You can aspire to be better than you are. You can do this. And you can do this by looking at people who also do it. They are your fuel. Inspiration is fuel. Nobody gets inspired by Jesse Smollett putting a fucking fake noose around his neck and walking into a hotel still holding a Subway sandwich. Nobody's inspired by that. Maybe you're inspired to never be that guy. And that, but it's a weak inspiration. You're inspired by greatness. You're inspired by great people's stories, great people's autobiographies and documentaries and stories of them putting in that work. You know, I mean, that, that's why there's so many people that, you know, their, their Instagram existence is essentially just all they're doing is just p- providing inspiration to people like David Goggins. That fucking yeah. guy every day. I mean, that guy's fueling millions of people just by yeah. being a badass. Just doing, just life is hard, motherfucker. Stay hard and just getting out and running every day. I mean, th- just by doing that. Okay, I I need to. I don't know him. So I love I him. How, who is who is filming these his videos? Wife. And like his wife. Is she run? Is she, does she She's have like in a, a car bike or something? She's in a car. a car. No, but the, but there's been other instances where he's like <laughs> climbing a mountain. I don't know. And it's a very it's a very smooth. Like maybe she has a stabilizer. I guess. Oh yeah, but probably like, has one of those. There's there's been some instances where I'm like, okay, this seems like a car, but this seems impossible to film and without like some some better equipment than just like a selfie video. You know? Well, he's uh, got a lot of money. I mean, he sold the shit out of that book. Um, so uh, it's a, a fantastic book and I, I can't recommend it enough and you can't hurt me. It's called, and the audio version is even better because the audio version, he actually gets somebody else to read it, but then he comes in between and discusses each and every chapter. So it's like the audio book and a podcast together. You know, he, he lives an incredible life and he's, that guy is an amazing source of fuel for people. But is an amazing source of fuel because of his own competition with himself. And he's a guy that's yeah. talked really openly about being weak at certain points in his life and being fat Overcome. and lazy and that he got through that. He's, he, has, he wasn't born this fucking warrior that came out of the womb running 100 miles. He became that person. He became that person from being a slob. 
And he's real open about it. And he's, he's even open about his own weakness currently. He's like, sometimes I'll stare at my fucking shoes for a half hour before I run. I'm like, shit, I don't want to do this. Fuck. But then he'll go out and do it. And while he's doing it, he'll yell. You know, like that. people like that are fuel. And there's certain people that don't like people like that because they make them feel bad. They look at themselves and they go, God damn it. I don't work as hard as that guy. I don't have that kind of mental toughness. And then they'll try to find something wrong with it. But it's it's because yeah. they're they're not willing to look at themselves objectively. They're not willing to try to be the best person that they can be. 